The modern metagame has had a chance to settle down post BNR, and I wanted to talk about where everything stands, where the old stalwarts of the format are, and where the new joiners and the Modern Horizons 2 of it all has meshed and mingled, and where the best cards lie. I want to talk about my five most impactful, or I think most powerful cards in the modern format right now. And in many ways, this is just very cherry picked because of their utility. So this list is A, very subjective, and also, you know, a mix of format defining cards, archetype defining cards, and just simple one or two of sideboard cards that still have a lot of utility. Now, this could inform you in terms of the decks that you might want to play going into this modern format, or just in general, the sideboard cards that you might want to swap in for your 15th or 14th slot in your sideboard, of course. But let's hop into the list, trying to avoid some of the more obvious picks like Orcish Bowmasters. If you're playing black, you're playing Bowmasters. I mean, obviously, this is format defining as a card now one or two of the cards are going to be relatively obvious in that sense but i'm going to explain why their utility is very important and what they're providing as well so let's hop right into the list and at number five i want to talk about karn the great creator archetype defining in so many ways in terms of what it is stopping played in tron played in coffers the card is insanely powerful and has been for a very long time probably the mid-range card of choice at this point the mid-range planeswalker of choice no longer liliana the veil in many ways i think it's just karn the great creator because wish boards are extremely powerful static abilities on planeswalkers are great too and look just creating creatures and threats out of random pieces on the board it's also really good too it's being played in tron obviously as the de facto karn the seven mana karn is now just a one of these days and alongside the one ring the card is very good because you play karn you play the one ring you draw into other stuff and and really like karn tutors for this and then you gain protection there's so much great synergy there it's played in the coffers deck as well as again the mid-range threat of choice where you're developing so much mana that you can tutor into so many great sideboard options that tron also gets an option into so this kind of plays more like the cloud post deck in modern whereas tron is kind of like its own thing at this point it's on tron in my opinion doesn't really resemble cloud post more like cabal coffers does in some ways anyway but that's a another subjective opinion so we'll leave it there walking ballista is the big target of choice and is really powerful in this format just in terms of not only deleting x1s but multiple threats and we've seen that cards like fury get banned for being able to deal with multiple threats and a kind of fury on a stick that may not have the double strike but the ability to just put more one one counters in and just so many powerful things come out of walking ballista as a threat and as a card that generally beats removal in many ways so very powerful in that sense arcbound ravager just being able to stop the Hard and scales deck that saw a lot of popularity a lot more players in it and honestly a deck that isn't that bad it's just because of the racto scam meta going around a lot of people picked it up and learned the intricacies of the deck so a lot of a lot more skilled pilots in the modern meta game so just being able to stop this more incidentally is really good and then the incidental like kind of equip stuff so if there's no cigar to aid on the battlefield any equipment that may cost zero or just relatively cheap you're being able to stop those activated abilities so that's great utility against the hammer decks as well Karn the Great Creator, all in all, great Planeswalker. Let's hop into number four in Spell Pierce. This is, again, one of those obvious ones, but I don't think people understand how much this card, like, single-handedly carries Murktide Region. I do not think this deck would actually be that good without, like, main board at least three Spell Pierces in there. Spell Pierce is such a powerful magic card and gives this deck so many options, so many ways to stop other decks in the main board and have its threats actually mean something because you have Spell Pierce, your opponent pre presents you with a win on their end, and if you don't have the Spell Pierce, your Ragavan, your Dragon's Face Chandler, your 8-8 Murktide mean absolutely nothing. Spell Pierce just stops so much in the format being non-creature. It stops the Living End in the Cascade decks. It stops the aforementioned card in the Great Creator and Dominable Creativity, honestly, which is seeing a big comeback, by the way, with Rakdos Scam not being in the metagame anymore. And then, notably, it doesn't stop Gris the Hunger Tide. I do have a short-form video about this as well, but it says non-creature spells specifically, and Gris, even though it is a Planeswalker, still counts as a creature in all other zones, so it does not meet that requirement. Do not try and counter Gris with your spell pierce and use your mana accordingly on the turn before. At number three, I want to talk about Stern Scolding, a card that not many people value this card is actually so powerful like you really get surprised at the amount of creature spells that have either like toughness or either power two or less it could be zero power 
It could be one power. It could be two power and the same with toughness as well. We have Gris the Hunger Tide, which is a 1-1 one, one insect creature. You can counter a Planeswalker that Spellpierce can't get. You can counter Ragavan early, especially if you're on the play, your opponent's on the draw, or they're maybe dashing in future ones. This is a great way to stop Ragavan. Patchwork Automaton, which is a nightmare of a card to deal with later on, especially with the ward. And then Yogmoth. Yogmoth has two power. This actually counters Yogmoth. Now, obviously, if this was like three power in toughness, Stern Scolding would probably, in my opinion, be like a playset card in your sideboard. It would borderline be playable in the main board because then it would be stopping like subtleties, endurances, furies. Like it'd be absolutely insane as a card. Um, but so that's why two power toughness is where it's fixed. But Stern Scolding, honestly, if you're playing blue, if you're playing counter magic, if you're playing interaction in that sense, Stern Scolding is worth that sideboard slot. It is so good in the modern format based on what it interacts with. And look, a card that spoilers we're going to talk about later to Shauna counters the next big modern staple in blue. Why not play another blue card to counter your opponent's blue staples? At number two, I want to talk about Blood Moon, a anti big mana card that has been playable, will be playable and continue to be so valuable in the modern format right now. Modern has seen a big renaissance thanks to Modern Horizons 2 with five color mana bases, two color, three color, four color, anything being possible really, and two to three color mana bases just almost being a staple suite. Monocolored mana bases are almost just a thing of the past. Blood Moon is gonna be able to punish that really, really easily. Look at the modern metagame itself. Yogmoth is a deck that tries to cast green, green, green spells with like black, black, and, and like, without any of the you're playing red you're playing lightning bolts you're probably playing black maybe as an accompaniment you're playing removal is what i'm saying if you get rid of the mana dorks yogmoth is a very time hard time working with its mana base to create those multiple intricate colors so stopping that is really easy crashing footfalls playing blood moon is fine it plays it but you're still going to be able to stop a lot of what the rest of the deck is doing even the cascade spells if they're not ready for it if they do not get their basics tron self-explanatory aim of the titan self-explanatory and at hammer time honestly it has value against a deck like this stopping the infect flying land like there's every single deck in this format except for maybe murktide region you get real good value out of the blood moon like even coffers is playing so many basic swamps you stop their big ramp, you make them play fair. If you're playing it in the main board, you can't be too upset about it. Look at Living End. Look at how many just non-basic lands they have. They play two basics and they have to be ready to grab them. They have to know, and, and they might, right? They might be able to grab them, but they have to have that specific searcher. They might not have the generous scent for the green. They might not have, you know, the way to get blue based on their fetches, uh, right? Like they just, so many things are well they would in terms of their fetches sorry that's how they would play it but they might not be able to get that green that they need that basic green so again that blood moon is so 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 powerful in this modern format now at number one the most impactful card in modern right now in my opinion tasha's tide binder no surprise i said i would try and avoid the obvious ones but tasha's uh, tishana's sorry i said tasha's tishana's tide binder is so so good this merfolk wizard with flash and this etb effect is crazy just people forget the rest of the card you counter target at like counter target activator or triggered ability but if it's an activator or triggered ability of an artifact creature or planeswalker then they lose all abilities it's not like they can they can't activate that ability that can't trigger it all abilities on that card are gone Dunzo, let's let's walk through this. The one ring, easy. Your opponent still keeps the protection trigger, but they lose everything else. Okay. Also, this thing is no longer indestructible. That matters a lot too. All right. Sure, everyone's playing haywire mites, but that matters too. Yogmoth, easy. Your opponent's going off. They're going infinite in response to you know one of their triggers coming back from the graveyard. Zap it right there. They can't. They don't have protection from humans. They don't have the pay one life. They don't have the discard to proliferate. Nothing. Prime time. Let's say, okay, so ETB, they get their two lands, right? They got the trample. They got the 6-6. Six, six. They then activate, and I believe this works. So if there's a judge in the comments, please let me know in the comment section down below if it doesn't. But if they activate their lands to give this card, you know, haste, vigilance, double strike, whatever, you can then Tashana's to stop all that. 
before combat it will not gain haste they do not get their attack trigger if they somehow give it haste again right because then they can give it haste again but then it's not going to have the rest of its abilities like trump uh, trample so you can chump it with like the tashanas if you want you can then you know they're not going to be able to search their cards for the two lands they have they lose all those abilities to fairy time raveler it loses the static ability you minus three and or, or like i don't even know they plus one obviously you're doing this on your turn but then they're gonna lose the static ability all right and then you can resolve maybe some of your other spells and other things that instant speed other things that that are broken by the teferi cast only anytime you cast this a sorcery thing Tashana's is so powerful in terms of what it does. It's a little, again, wonky with Teferi, but if there's stuff that you need to do on your turn that you need to have counter magic for, you have a lot of mana, you play the Tashana's, you can get rid of that static ability, which is so good. Again, Tashana Tidebinder, probably the most impactful card in modern right now, full stop. The blue spells and just a lot of blue in this list in general. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What card did I miss? What card is just completely taken over the post fury and beanstalk ban metagame in modern? Obviously, we're seeing a lot of Yawgmoth, a lot of Amulet, a lot of a lot of creature decks, honestly, in general. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear it. For now, I'm going to go back to testing some legacy, playing some modern as well, and also some timeless on arena. Check my second channel.